I am recording Jundas. That's the So guys, we want to talk about Jundas. Super duper important for the sake of the exam. Super duper important for the sake of the exam. My screen is shared, right guys? You can see my screen, correct? You can see my screen? Okay. <clears throat> Guys, talking about jaundice. Jaundice, jaundice, jaundice. We have to know a little bit of physiology, physiology, physiology. And a little bit of hematology that we discussed last week. That we discussed last week, right? So, we have two types of bilirubin. We have two types of bilirubin mainly. We have two types of bilirubin, direct and indirect. Direct and indirect. Direct or conjugated, direct or conjugated, and indirect or inconjugated. Guys, forget about that C and G and D and R. We'll talk about those syndromes a little bit later. We'll talk about those syndromes a little bit later. But right now, I want you to focus on where, what we are talking, what we, what we are talking about now right so basically whenever you hear indirect bilirubin hyperbilirubinemia indirect think of hemolysis whenever you hear direct hyperbilirubinemia think about cholestasis i'm not saying these are the only causes right but the first thing that should come into our minds whenever we have hyperbilirubinemia indirect hyperbilirubinemia we should think of hemolysis. Whenever they talk about direct hyperbilly, we should think about cholestasis. Stasis in the flow of the coal bile, right? Direct bilirubin is water soluble. Direct bilirubin is water soluble. Direct is conjugated. In is on. Indirect is unconjugated. So what's happening is indirect bilirubin unconjugated, indirect bilirubin unconjugated, indirect bilirubin unconjugated. That I am thinking of hemolysis comes into my liver, gets conjugated there, and gets excreted from my bile ducts. Right? So basically, indirect bile which is a product of hemolysis is coming to my liver gets conjugated in my hepatocytes and get excreted through the bile ducts that's the story of bilirubin direct bile is water soluble and goes directly into my diuresis Direct bile is water soluble and goes directly to my diuresis and makes my urine dark directly. Indirect bile moves indirectly. Direct Jahat Felish. Direct look at the arrow. Direct moves directly toward the diuresis. Indirect, if this direction is direct, the other direction is indirect. Indirect goes indirectly to my brain, gets deposited in my basal ganglia and causing kernicterus. Indirect is attached to albumin. So it's fat soluble, not water soluble. Indirect is attached to albumin, so it's fat soluble. It can pass through the blood brain barrier and gets deposited in my basal ganglia, causing kernicterus. Can indirect make my urine dark? Yes, it can, indirectly. Can indirect make can indirect make my urine dark? Yes, it can. Indirectly. Hemoglobin urea. 
indirect doesn't go to the diuresis, correct. It's not even water soluble, that's correct. But it can make my urine indirectly dark. How? Hemoglobin urea. Hemoglobin urea. So far, so good. So far, so good, guys. First timers, so far, so good. No questions? I'm moving forward. Okay, then. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. There are some syndromes that always bothered us. There were some syndromes that always bothered us, bothering us in the exams. Let's think about them once and get over them forever. Right? There are two syndromes, two by two, matched with each other. There is Dubin Johnson and Rotor. Dubin Johnson and Rotor. Dubin Johnson and Rotor. DNR. Giving me direct hyperbilirubinemia because they have problem with the excretion of the bile. Dubin Johnson and Rotor. Dubin Johnson reminds me of Ben Johnson. So you have dark pigmentations in your hepatocytes. You will question a step two, not a step one. Ben Johnson. The Canadian, Jamaican Canadian, Jamaican born Canadian sprinter, 100 meters, 1988, Seoul Olympics. Right? Dubin Johnson and Rotor, DNR, direct hyperbilly. Krigler Najar and Gilbert, Gilbert. Krigler Najar and Gilbert, Gilbert. C N G. They have problem with conjugation. Krigler Najar and Gilbert Gilbert. Problem with conjugation. If they have problem with conjugation, they cannot conjugate properly. So they will have indirect hyperbilly. If D and R are direct, C and G are indirect. For Persians, Kaj, Kaj. زنی رو بعد مرد رو راستی سستی کجی زاید و کاستی right کج indirect if that is Krigler, Najar and Gilbert they have problem with conjugation so indirect hyperbilly whenever they tell you hyper bilirubinemia indirect think about indirect movement to the brain kernicterus in neonatology think of hemolysis think of problem with conjugation like Krigler, Najar, and Gilbert. Whenever they tell you something about direct hyperbilly, think about cholestasis, biliary atresia, problem with excretion, like Dubin, Johnson, and Rotor, DNR, direct. Direct goes directly into the diuresis because it's water soluble. Is that clear? Is that clear for everybody? Any questions? If you have any questions, ask now because we want to move forward. Because we want to move forward. Especially the doctors who are seeing it for the first time. If you have any questions, let me know now. If not, we are moving forward. Three, two, one. Problem with excretion will give you problem with excretion will give you will give you direct hyperbilly. You cannot excrete. It's got conjugated, it's not getting excreted into your bile ducts. Or it's leaking from the bile ducts. Like Dubin Johnson and Rotor. Like biliary atresia. 
like cholestasis. Clear? Clear three, clear two, clear one. I am moving forward. Okay. <clears throat> Hemolysis. We discussed it last week. Hemolysis. We discussed it last week in hematology. In hemolysis, what is the evidence that I have hemolysis? High retic count, normal is around 1% to 2%. There is a correction I didn't discuss in the class, but there is a correction for it as well. If your retic count is, if retic count for the obsessed doctors, if for the obsessive doctors, if the retic count is more than 1% to 2%, that's high, it shows hemolysis. Other evidences of hemolysis is B, L, H. Hyperbilly, indirect, LDH, increased, hemoglobinemia, and hemoglobinuria. And that indirect bile will attach haptoglobulin as a shuttle to take it to the albumin station. So haptoglobulin will go down. Ballet in far is yes. Do you have hemolysis? Ballet, yes. BLH. Indirect hyperbilly, LDH going high, hemoglobinemia and hemoglobinuria. So can indirect bilirubin make my urine dark? Yes, it can. Indirectly by shooting hemoglobin into the urine. Hemoglobin, myoglobin makes your urine dark. And haptoglobulin goes down because these guys will attach to these guys to get into the album and the station. Whenever you have hemolysis, size doesn't matter that much. Shape does. Look at the shape of my RBC, right? Look at the shape of my RBC. Look at the shape of my RBC. Peripheral blood smear. In normal circumstances, I will see a donut I will see a donut, right? Instead of seeing a biconcave donut, right? I will see other shapes. I might see odd and strange shapes, schizocytes, sites with schizophrenia, cells with schizophrenia, fragmented RBC, schizocytes, schistocyte, right? Fragmented RBCs. It's maha. Microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. It's Maha microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. There is a pathology in my small vessels breaking down my RBCs and platelets. Maha microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. HUS TTPDIC in internal medicine hematology and their stepsister in OB gynecology. Help, help, help. Hemolytic uremic syndrome, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, and DIC disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. Three brothers in internal medicine and their stepsister in OB gynecology help. Hemolysis elevated liver enzymes and low platelets. If I see schizocytes, fragmented RBCs, schizocytes, and helmet cells, that's a sign of MAHA, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. I will read the story of the patient. I will read the history of the patient. HUSTTPDIC, hemolytic uremic syndrome, traumatic thrombocytopenic purpura, and DIC disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, or their stepsister in OB gynecology help, which is severe preeclampsia. And you will help the patient by terminating their pregnancy because that's severe preeclampsia. Preeclampsia does not have 50 shades of gray. It's white, mild, or it's black, severe. If it is severe, you have to terminate. If it is mild, you keep your eyes on the patient. OB gynecology coming in a couple of weeks. 
Or you look at you look under the microscope and you see spherocytes, a spherical, a spherical, a spherical. You do a Coombs test looking for IgG, Coombs with a binocular looking for IgGs. Looking for IgGs. Positive autoimmune hemolysis. Positive Coombs means there is immunoglobulin, there is IgG against my RBCs. I got allergic to my own RBCs, autoimmune hemolysis. The cheeks of those donuts are so cute that somebody pulled them and took some chunk of it. Autoimmune hemolysis. Or genetically, I have hereditary aspherocytosis. Genetically, right, 75% of the time, it's autosomal dominant, if you remember. I do not, I'm not able to make spectrin and anchoring to make the membrane like a donut. Instead, it is like a sphere. The osmotic fragility of the cells are higher, so they can easily burst hemolysis. I look under the microscope and I see target, 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 target cells. Zumerero, Mexican hat from the top. Viva Zapata, Anthony Queen. Right? We can see those actually target, target, target cells. Ta for tha, thalassemia. L for liver disease. Target cells in thalassemia and liver disease. Jigero targets and the liver disease. Target cells. Oopsie. I look under the microscope. I see hickeys and love bites. I see hickeys and love bites. I see hickeys and love bites. Rusted, rusted, rusted RBCs. The sponsor of today's class, Heinz Ketchup. Right? Those hickeys. A rusted RBC. And the macrophage in the spleen doesn't like it, so take a bite out of it. And bite cells. Oxidative changes. G6PD deficiency. Every single time that I go to a Greek restaurant or I date a Greek girl, right? I, get, I become pale and my urine gets dark. Or whenever I eat or smell fava beans. G6PD deficiency. X-linked. G6 PD deficiency. Man, is it Juja Pesaros? G6 PD, G6 P, Juja Pesar. Males, G6 PD deficiency. Oxidative changes. Or my cells are sickling, 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 sickling. When it's like a donut, they do not stick together. They do not stack at, stack at the top of each other. But when they're sickling, they can stick together and can block the circulation. Also, there is some degree of hemolysis as well. Oh, so all the hemolytic anemias that we discussed last weekend can end up with high bilirubin. In hemolysis, which one is more important, shape or size? Shape is more important. How do you check my shape looking at me under the microscope, peripheral blood smear, PBS? What is the evidence that I have hemolysis? Red count is high, more than one to two percent. In normal circumstances, one to two percent. Reticulocytes are immature RBCs. When do I see immature RBCs in the periphery? When I have a lot of casualties. When I have a lot of hemolysis. When I have a lot of casualties in the frontiers, you will see underage soldiers in the frontiers. They recruit from high schools. What are the other evidences that I have hemolysis? PLH, ballet enforcing means yes. If you propose to a girl and they say ballet means it's done, it's finished. You can marry them, right? PLH, PLH, ballet. B, hyperbilirubinemia, indirect. L, LDH goes high. The most non-specific enzyme in the body showing cell death. H, haptoglobulin goes down because it's a shuttle for indirect bile. 
right? So it attaches to the bile, so hapto goes down, haptoglobulin, and the juice of the RBCs are coming down, so it will get into my blood, and it will end up in my urine, hemoglobin emia, and hemoglobin urea, that hemoglobin urea makes my urine dark. So dark urine is not always direct hyperbilly. Direct hyperbilly makes my urine dark directly, and indirect bilirubin makes my urine dark indirectly. <coughs> And you will look at my cells under the microscope. If they are fragmented, fragmented, fragmented RBCs, the RBC helmet cells, schizocytes, right? It's maha, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. There is a pathology in my small vessels breaking down my platelets and RBCs. HUS, TTP, DIC, hemolytic uremic syndrome, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, not ITP. ITP is a completely different pathophysiology and DIC disseminated intravascular coagulopathy fat RN and fat doctor if you remember from last week right fart and N fart if you remember from last week <clears throat> and help severe preeclampsia hemolysis elevated liver enzymes and low platelets three brothers in hematology and one stepsister in OB gynecology if I see spherocytes a spherical a spherical a spherical spherical a spherical a spherical Coombs. Coombs test is looking for, with a binocular, looking for IgGs. Positive autoimmune hemolysis. Negative spherical hereditary spherocytosis. You look at it under the microscope, you see target, target, target cells, thalassemia, ta for ta, thalassemia, and also liver disease. You see hickeys and log bites, rusted RBCs, and bite cells. Think of oxidative changes, G6PD deficiency. You look under the microscope, you see sickle, 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 it's sickle cell anemia. You have some degrees of hemolysis in it as well. Everybody's clear with this slide? Everybody, courtesy of my ENT professor. <clears throat> any, any question? <clears throat> Clear, guys? Because we're moving on. Is that clear? Okay, then. Three, two, one. Let's move. <clears throat> I think we are good. Let me show you something. Dr. Banaksha, did you share um, the PDF version of the Johnness from Nakoski? <clears throat> I think you did. I think you did. Because I saw something in PDF. You did? Perfect. Thank you so much for being so helpful. Mm -hmm. You have these guys. You have it, you have it, you have it. So
These are slides from the Nagoski, but doctors already shared it. The mother of a five-day-old male child calls the office or brought the kid to the office or emergency department complaining that her child has yellow skin and eyes. Yellow skin and eyes. Yellow skin and eyes. So what to do with this kid? A lot of us might have encountered these situations. And if you're not a pediatrician or if you're not dealing with these kind of cases, right, we get a little bit puzzled because we might not remember the systematic approach to the cases of jaundice, right? So ladies, gentlemen, doctors, the major job of or the major task in approaching jaundice is differentiating physiologic versus pathologic jaundice is it physiologic jaundice versus pathologic jaundice what is physiologic jaundice when i am born i am coming from the uterus uterus is a hypoxic environment for me because it's a hypoxic environment for me i start making a lot of rbcs but when I come out, it is not a hypoxic environment anymore. I don't need that much RBC. So I will start breaking them down. The byproduct of the breakdown of those extra masses of RBCs, or extra mass of RBC, is bilirubin. If it is too much for my body to handle it, I will get yellow. Jaundice. That's physiology jaundice. The major task approaching any jaundice case is differentiating physiologic from pathologic. Physiologic from pathologic. Physiologic from pathologic. And for differentiating physiologic from pathologic. Pathological jaundice or pathologic jaundice are the things that we shouldn't do on a date. The same things that make a date pathological will make jaundice pathological as well. What the hell are you talking about? Too early, too fast, too late. Too early, too late, too fast. If you do these things on a date, it's pathological. <clears throat> Too early. First day. First day jaundice is never physiologic. It's always pathologic. First day jaundice is never physiologic. It's always pathologic. There is something wrong. It's like proposing on the first date. Come on. You're just knowing each other. You might fall in love, but you shouldn't propose on the first date. Too early. If somebody proposes to you on the first date, first, first doubt is <laughs> mental health. <laughs> the first differential diagnosis is something wrong with the guy, right? It's not falling in love. You might fall in love in the first date, but you shouldn't propose, right? Too early, first day. First date jaundice is never physiologic. Too late. Right? Extending beyond the second week or starting after the second week. Extending beyond the 14th day or starting then 
the normal range timing range for physiologic jaundice it between the day 2 to 14 physiologic jaundice do not start do not start at physiologic jaundice doesn't start after the 14th day or it doesn't extend beyond the 14th day right it's your 14th date and the guy barely touched your hands too late that's not normal either too fast you just had a coffee with each other you just got out of a Starbucks the guy started making out with you <laughs> at the door right so that's too fast huh all the all the people passing by saying grab a grab a place find a place and do this kind of stuff right so basically 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 right too fast what is too fast bilirubin is increasing and increasing and increasing too fast what is too fast more than five milligram per dl per day more than five milligram per dl per day more than i always worked with milligram per dl and i always remember these numbers and i do not bother to go for anything else but there is micromole per liter as well which is milligram per dl times 17. but i never bother milligram per dls right i always work with them and i always remember them micromole per liter is the same guy times 17. you can see that here that's a conversion factor five milligram per dl per day it's raising how can I guess, how can I have an estimate how much the bilirubin is by looking at the patient? Taking the patient's clothes off, make the kid naked and look at the extent of the jaundice. If it is only face, it is around five. If it is involving the trunk, it's around 10. If it is involving my feet, it's around 15. Face, 5. Trunk, 10. Feet, 15. Palm and sole. Palm and sole, the bottom of my foot. That's around 20. That's around 20. Thigh is between trunk and feet. So it's around 12, 13. Estimation. Only eyes. 2.5, 2 to 2.5. Around 2 to 2.5. Around 2 to 2.5 is only eyes. Face. Guys, this came, this, came, this came from a pediatrician, by the way. Right? So face is around 5. Trunk is around 10. Feet is around 15. Thigh is between trunk and feet, around 12, 13. Palm and sole is around 20. Eyes only, 2 to 2.5. Doc, yes. Yesterday it was his face. Today it's his trunk. Tomorrow, all the way to the feet. That's pathological. That's pathological. That's pathological. I am talking about the amount of bilirubin. Yes, I am. I am talking about the bilirubin level. I am talking about bilirubin level. Bilirubin rises more than five milligram per DL per day. Too early, too late, too fast. Too early, too late, too fast. Everybody's clear with pathologic versus physiologic? Everybody is clear with the concept? Everybody is clear with the concept? Any question about it so far? Clear, guys? Okay, then. 
then we are moving on. Like any other scenario, like any other scenario, right? Like any other scenario, we start with onset course duration. There is a chief complaint. We all need to start with onset course and duration. How to start, when to start, all the time, on and off, getting better, getting worse, what have you done so far, right? It has not worsened. The child is awake, responsive, and playful. I am looking for infections and sepsis. It's really difficult to localize any infection in a little munchkin. It's hard, right? The child is awake, responsive, playful, and active. We are trying to rule out any infection or sepsis, right? Stomach is soft and has two to three daily bowel movements. Any change in the stool, any change in the urine, the frequency, the number, the amount, the color, the smell. Stomach is soft, has two or three daily bowel movements. The color of a stool is brown. I'm looking for any blood. She denies any history of recent fever, constitutional symptoms, vomiting, seizure, jerky movements, upper respiratory tract infection, breathlessness, Right? Any secretion from anywhere in the body will ask about the Coca plus minus B, the sponsor of the, the sponsor of another sponsor of the afternoon session, Coca Cola. Any secretion from anywhere in the body, Coca plus minus B. Color, odor, consistency, amount, is there any blood in it or not? Color, odor, consistency, amount, is there any blood in it or not? Every single thing, I know these sliders are, re are related to the Nakoski class, but they are all related to your exam that you're doing. I don't limit myself to any source, any name, any title or anything like that, right? So any secretion from anywhere in the body, odor, smell, odor, smell, right? Color. Older, consistency, amount, there is blood in it or not, plus minus B, blood. I'm asking about constitutional symptoms, fever, chill, bowel habits, right? Binder, binder, yes, in any kid with any symptom, in any kid with any symptom, in any kid, with any symptom, right? We want to check a pediatric history. We want to check a pediatric history. We'll ask the parents to bring you the binder of the kid, the binder, 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 binder. I want to check the kid's binder. What do you mean binder? You see? Right? I want to check the kid's binder. Onset course duration. Pediatric history. Binder. I want to check binder. Right? B for birth information. Term, preterm, natural delivery, cesarean section, planned pregnancy birth defects, congenital anomalies, 
prenatal visits, prenatal care. Eye immunization and shots, up to date or not. Updated or not. Up to date or not. And in nutrition, are the shots up to date? Immunization up to date or not? And for nutrition, breast fat, formula fat, how much, amount, any changes? D for development, developmental milestones. All the fun stuff that we'll review probably tomorrow. Environment, where do you live? House, condo, condominium, house, right? Who is the main caregiver? How many hours do you spend? Any chance that he's being, or he or she is being misbehaved or mistreated? Environment. And R, rash. Rash is so important. Rash is so important in kids that we always ask. So I want to check the kid's binder. Binder. Birth information, immunization, nutrition, development, environment, rash. 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 <clears throat> Right. So, binder. Okay, there is no noticeable dryness of the mouth. We are looking for dehydration symptoms. He is wetting seven to eight diapers per day every three to four hours. The best actually index showing the kid is or the, the neonate is hydrated enough or not is the amount of urination, right? Well hydrated. He was delivered vaginally birth information at full term, okay? The blood group of both mother and neonate is B positive. Oh, blood group and RH of the mother and the kid for ABO and RH incompatibilities. For ABO and RH incompatibilities. So the blood group of both mother and neonate is B positive. So there is no ABO or RH incompatibility, right? Differential diagnoses, physiologic jaundice, physiologic jaundice, right? The situation of the kid, the situation of the kid, five day old, can it be physiologic? Five day old, can it be physiologic? Can it be physiologic? Yes, it can. 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 It can, it can, it can. Five days old, it can. ABORH incompatibility. ABORH incompatibility. Which one is more severe, ABORH? Which one is more severe, ABO and RH? ABO is more severe. ABO is more severe. ABO is more severe. Which one is more common? Which one is more common? Which one is more common? ABO is more common. ABO is more common. Which one can involve the first baby? Which one can involve the first baby? ABO. The answer to all my questions were ABO. More common, more severe, and can involve the first baby. More common, more severe, and can involve the first baby as well. RH incompatibility is a little bit more delayed. <clears throat> RH is a little bit more delayed and it doesn't involve the first baby. RH is like your first, first meeting with your mother-in-law. Mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. First time meeting each other, they get sensitized against each other. Second time, third world war. That's RH incompatibility. That's RH incompatibility. Neonatal sepsis will shut down the whole conjugation system and the whole liver function and the all, all the hepatocellular function, neonatal sepsis. That's why we check for the symptoms of sepsis. Torch congenital, congenital infections. Congenital infections, torch. Which one can give you prolonged jaundice? Which torch infection can give you prolonged jaundice? Which torch infection can give you prolonged jaundice? All of them. All of them. 
Which one can give you hepatosplenomegaly? Which one can give you hepatosplenomegaly? All of them. Which one can give you IUGR and IUFT, intrauterine growth retardation and intrauterine fetal death? All of them. Which one can give you mental retardation? All of them. So all the torch infections can give you prolonged jaundice, hepatosplenomegaly, IUGR, uterine growth retardation, intrauterine growth retardation, IUFT, intrauterine fetal death, or fetal demise. All of them can give you mental retardation. Breastfeeding jaundice and breast milk jaundice. Breastfeeding jaundice and breast milk jaundice and breastfeeding jaundice and breast milk jaundice. They love to torture you with that. Let's get over it for the, for the first and last time. Not for the first time, but at least for the last time. Breastfeeding. All of them are already shared. All of them are already shared. Everything is already shared. Right? Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and... They're, they're actually, you're talking about the... You're talking about the jundas? It's shared already. It's shared already. Right? Breastfeeding jaundice and breast milk jaundice. Breastfeeding jaundice and breast milk jaundice. And breastfeeding jaundice and breast milk jaundice. Ladies and gentlemen, when does it happen? What is the pathophysiology? And what is the treatment? And based on one or two you world questions, I modify this sketch a little bit so those modifications and those additions came from a table from your world as well right so breastfeeding jaundice and breast milk jaundice and breastfeeding jaundice and breast milk jaundice when does it happen what is the pathophysiology and what is the treatment breastfeeding jaundice when does it happen Usually first week. What is the pathophysiology? Feeding problem. It's breast feeding jaundice. The problem is in the feeding. There are two techniques for breastfeeding. There are videos online and you can watch. Right? So the neonate is dehydrated because it's not receiving enough feeding. What is the treatment? More feeding. Give me, give me, give me more. Of which we have formula about shit. Britney Spears ask her even shit. Breastfeeding jaundice. Breast feeding jaundice. When does it happen on the first week? What is the pathophysiology? Feeding problem. What is the sign? Dehydrated. What is the treatment? Feeding more. Feeding more. Feeding more. Chico, we were this. There's a more cheese in the game, would. Feeding more. Shasabani. Feeding more. Right? If severe, if severe, you can supplement if severe, and maybe the mother does not have enough milk, maybe might not have enough breast milk. Supplement with cow milk based formula. It's not cow milk. Cow milk, we don't give it before the first year. We don't give it before the first year. We don't give cow milk before the first year. It will actually cause allergy and GI bleeding. Right? He said, if severe, if severe, or the mother, or the mother, right, does not have enough milk, supplement, supplement the breast feeding with some cow milk based formula not cow milk cow milk based formula 
That's breastfeeding jaundice. Everybody's clear with the breastfeeding jaundice? Everybody's clear with the breastfeeding jaundice? We want to talk about breast milk jaundice now. We want to talk about breast milk jaundice now. Breast milk is a little bit later, maybe second week. Breast milk jaundice maybe a little bit later, right? It's actually second week usually. Pathophysiology, the neonate is not dehydrated, actually well fed, right? They are not able to handle a protein in the breast milk. They cannot handle a protein in the breast milk, right? So, in cases that are mild, in mild cases, continue breastfeeding, continue breastfeeding. If a little bit more severe, you can stop the breast milk for maximum a week, a couple of days to a week. Stop breast milk, give them formula, and then go back to breastfeeding again because then they are able to handle it. A little bit later, they, are they will be able to handle it. So breast milk jaundice usually happens a little bit later. What is the pathophysiology? They, they actually, the neonate is not dehydrated. They are actually well fed. What is the treatment? Continue breastfeeding, as you can see here, continue breastfeeding, or in severe cases, you're gonna stop breast milk for a couple of days, give them formula, then go back to breast feeding again. Breastfeeding and breast milk jaundice clear for everybody? I think they're not able to handle the protein in the milk, Dr. Arish. That's what I remember. That's what I remember. As, as far as I remember. Okay, then. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. I'll, it, it will be finished soon. It will be finished soon. Just and 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 the end of this, it will be finished. The level, the maximum level, the maximum level. It's not at the level that you need. It's usually not at the level that you need phototherapy or exchange. It's usually not at that level. Glucuronyl transferase inhibitor in the breast milk. There is glucuronyl transferase inhibitor in the breast milk. That's the exact pathophysiology. Right? Okay, so breastfeeding jaundice, this condition, breastfeeding, it, that results from poor breastfeeding, which in turn results in slow bowel movements and insufficient removal of the bilirubin. Polycythemia, guys, you have a lot of RBC. Those RBCs will break down. The byproduct is indirect bilirubin. So polycythemia can cause it as well. Familial neonatal hyperbilly. 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 Look for a positive, positive history of a sibling who had neonatal jaundice requiring phototherapy. Usually it runs in the family. Usually it runs in the family. One of my mom's cousin, two brothers and one sister, right? Two of them needed phototherapy, one of them needed exchange. Familial neonatal hyperbilirubinemia. Breast milk jaundice this condition results from insufficient mechanisms in the neonatal digestive tract to adequately excrete bilirubin. This condition results from insufficient mechanisms in the neonatal digestive tract to adequately excrete bilirubin. Glucuronyl transferase inhibitor. In contrast to breastfeeding jaundice, neonates with this condition typically feed well and therefore increase their bilirubin loads. Biliary atresia. If I have biliary atresia, my biliary tree is not developed properly. So there is a leakage in the bilirubin. Metabolic disorders. We'll talk about it in a couple of minutes with Galliver and galactosemia. Galliver and galactosemia. Metabolic disorders like hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism make everything slow, including, including your jaundice or jaundice resolution. Galactosemia, 
We'll talk about it in a couple of minutes. Galactosemia. This is the story of the Galliver. Galliver adven adventures. Galactosemia. It can give you both direct and indirect hyperbilly. This is the story of the Gulliver in Philartitia's album. It will come soon. Hereditary hemolytic disorders such as spherocytosis or G6PD deficiency. When you have hemolysis, you will get jaundice. Why? Indirect bile, indirect bile, indirect bile. Diagnostic workup, total and direct bilirubin. Total and direct bilirubin. Why? Because then you will calculate the indirect indirectly. Total minus direct will give you indirect hyperbole. Blood typing and Coombs test. Blood typing, RH, in this case, the mother was B positive, the kid was B positive as well. Blood typing and direct Coombs testing, looking for antibodies, especially AGG. CRP and ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate and C-reactive protein to monitor for signs of infection and inflammation. Check CBC, how bad the hemolysis is, how bad the anemia is. If you're thinking of torch infections, serology, serology, serology for CMV, cytomegalovirus, toxoplasmosis, rubella, RPR for syphilis, urine culture for CMV, in suspected intrauterine torch infections. Pathological, too early, too late, too fast. Most serious complication is the position of the bilirubin in the basal ganglia called kernicterus. Kernicterus can end up with hypotonia, seizure, opistotonus, and choreatitosis, hearing loss, mental retardation. Kernicterus is severe, exchange transfusion right away. Kernicterus is severe, exchange transfusion right away. Sholiha, seftiha, karyo, mental retardation. اول شل میشه هایپوتونیا بعد سفت میشه سیجر اوپیزوتونوس بعد دیگه کر میشه و خر میشه متال ریتاریشن so the most serious complication is the deposition of bilirubin indirect indirect bile going to my brain in the basal ganglia called kernicterus kernicterus with hypotonia سیجر اوپیزوتونوس کوریاتتوسس دار رخص always dancing and hearing loss and mental retardation. Diagnostic testing and treatment, direct and indirect Billy level, check blood type of infant and mother for A, B, O, and RH incompatibility, analyze peripheral blood smear and retic counts, looking for hemolysis and looking at the shape of my RBC, not my heart. Shape of my heart was that song, right? Guys, neonatal jaundice, Neonatal jaundice, if it is benign and mild, observe and reassure. Neonatal jaundice, if it is benign and mild, observe and reassure. Right? Reassure the parents and observe. Maybe tell them that if the situation gets worse, look, look to actually at which level the, 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 kid is yell, uh, the kid is having jaundice. If it is getting better, right, then it's fine. If it's getting worse, come back. We'll check it again. So benign and mild, observe and reassure. Otherwise, phototherapy, and if it doesn't work, or if, it's, if it is more severe, you will do exchange transfusion. What is phototherapy? What is phototherapy? Using UV lights to actually make indirect bile that goes indirectly into my brain to more water-soluble products. We use phototherapy for indirect hyperbilly. If you use it for direct hyperbilly, you will have a tanned bronze baby. We'll use it for indirect hyperbilly to make it water soluble so the baby is peeing it out. Right? There is a table. There is a table. There is a graph. Neonatologists put it on the graph based on the age of the kid and the time that they're seeing the patients, first day, second day, third day, how old is the baby, how much is the bilirubin level, is it in the first 24 hours and a preterm baby, or it's after the first 24 hours and it's a term baby. These are all the factors. 
Because when the kid is older, I'm talking about the days of life, not the years of life. We are talking about neonatology, right? A five-day-old kid has a more developed blood-brain barrier in comparison to a two-day-old kid, two-day, five-day, right? A five-day-old kid can tolerate higher levels of bilirubin in comparison to a two-day-old. If it is the first day and preterm, I might not be able to handle even the levels that are considered normal or tolerable for a kid which is term and, for example, five days old. So we have two options, phototherapy and exchange transfusion. With phototherapy, we'll, tr trans we'll actually we'll transform indirect hyperbilly to more water-soluble forms so the kid can pee it out. And with exchange transfusion, you dilute and ch basically exchange the plasma, which is full of bilirubin. The same thing that we did for sickle cell and critical organs or vital organs last week to decrease the amount of the sickles from 90% to 30-40%. 80-90 to 30-40%. Okay? Sickle cell crisis involving the vital organs brain, eye, lung, penis. Phototherapy with blue green light helps break down bilirubin to excretable components. Consider exchange transfusion if bilirubin raises 20-25 milligram per DL, age and term and preterm. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about it when I get to the book because it really depends. There is a graph that usually neonatologists use it, right? So for example, if it is preterm and first day, you might think of you might think of UV therapy around 10, 12, and you might think of exchange transfusion around 12 to 15. Right? Later on, you might think of even UV therapy around 20, 22, 23. You might think of exchange transfusion around 25, 30. Right? So we'll talk about it later. Guys, the stuff that we said so far, the stuff that we talked about so far, is that clear for everybody? And I'm stopping recording.